Hello and good evening. It's an enormous pleasure to be here tonight and thank you all for tuning in. Um, we have a feast of music by Roxana Panufnik to play you this evening and we're very excited. Um, this is our first concert back playing together after, well, since March, uh, since uh, all these things have changed uh, for, for all of us. And so it's a very, very special occasion. And uh, we're in this wonderful house that belongs to uh, Roxana Panufnik's mother, Lady Camilla Panufnik, and we're extru extremely grateful to her for allowing us to use this space. Um, if you click the link below, so there'll be an arrow if you're on the phone or uh, see more if you're watching on the internet, you'll be able to download a program, a PDF program, with all the information uh, of tonight's concert. Um, also, you will see that this concert is in aid uh, of the Royal Society of Musicians, um, who provide vital financial assistance for musicians in need. So if you would like to make a do donation to the RSM, uh, there is a button or a link to do donate below, and we would greatly appreciate that. So um, I would now like to introduce Roxana Panufnik, our composer for tonight's concert, to come and introduce the first piece. Thank you, Ben. Hello, everybody. Lovely to see you all. The first two pieces you're going to hear are actually competition pieces. The first one, Canto, was commissioned by the Lionel Turtis International Viola Competition. And I knew it was a piece that very nervous finalists were going to have to play. So there are technically demanding passages, but there's also some nice slow lyrical bits as well. Before I started writing, I looked up Lionel Turtis. And it turned out he was Ashkenazi Jewish, like 50% of me. And so I found a beautiful Ashkenazi cantorial chant. And you'll hear just so that a first of 30, 40 seconds of the piece are that chant, and then I develop it. And I called the piece Canto because the viola has such a beautiful singing, warm tone. But I then discovered after that that Lionel Tess's father was actually a cantor at a synagogue. Thank you.
The next piece, Hora Bessarabia, was originally written for solo violin, and it was for the Huji Menuhin International Violin Competition for the finalists to play. And you're probably wondering why, why is she holding this beautiful copper violin? This is actually the prized possession of my mum's. When she was aged nine or ten, she used to walk to school every day and she used to pass this junk shop. And, um, and she was madly in love with this violin that she saw every day, so she saved up all her pennies. And for the grand sum of... How much was it, Mum? One pound. One pound. For one pound... It was a lot in those days. It was, she got this beautiful violin, and it now hangs in her kitchen. And this has actually been played by Yehudi Menuhin when he came to visit my parents here some 40 years ago or so, would you say? Anyway, back to the piece. So um, Yehudi, it was his 100th birthday. It would have been his 100th birthday when I wrote this piece for the finalists. And I knew that he absolutely loved gypsy music, so I've taken a Romanian and Hungarian doina and hora um, for my inspiration for this piece. A doina is a very slow, very soulful lyrical piece, sounding quite sort of Middle Eastern modally. And then the hora is fast and virtuosic and quite dangerously fast and really complicated rhythms, like it even goes into 15, 16 at one stage. So over to you, Hannah and Andy.
Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for joining us for this live stream concert. It's wonderful to be in this amazing room and actually do a concert again because we haven't done one for such a long time and it's such a privilege to be here. So thank you for joining us. We are giving this concert tonight in aid of the Royal Society of Musicians, which is a charity who helps musicians in need. So if you are able, please, please do give generously um, via the link at the bottom of your screens. Thank you so much. So the next piece on the programme tonight is um, Roxana Panufnik's um, Heartfelt, written for String Quartet. It is a world premiere, and we're so delighted that we commissioned this from her a couple of years ago. Um, we love her music so much. It's really exploratory and vivid and expressive, um, and it's been such a joy working with her on this piece. And we've had some fun looking at new techniques and trying to get new colours and basically trying to realise Roxana's um, vision for this piece. So, Roxana, please could you come and tell us a little bit about how this piece came to be and a bit of the story behind it? When I first met the Sakoni Quartet, um, they were doing this amazing project called Heartfelt, where they were wearing um, heart rate monitors which would actually connect to gadgets that the audience would have in their hands so they could feel the heartbeat of the performers as they were performing. And this made me really feel like I'd love to write a whole piece about the heart. And I was talking to a good friend of mine, Central Asian musicologist, Dr. Razia Seltanova, and I was asking her, does any of the music in that region get its inspiration or its rhythms or anything from the heart? And she said, yes. In 17th century Uzbekistan, the court musicians used to start their tempo of their piece by feeling their pulse. And you'll see Ben, the first violinist, taking his pulse and setting the tempo for the piece. So I imagined this long processional going down the Silk Road in Uzbekistan with very majestic soldiers and royalty at the front starting at the stately pulse rate tempo. And then we have some slightly unruly camels that start off well but keep on going astray and then coming back in and then going astray again. And then we have the beautiful ladies in all their ornate and colourful silks. And then everybody ends playing all these different musics together and you hear the procession going off into the distance and we're left with a lonely wind over the plains. And I've also used some very old Uzbek dance rhythms called shashmakam and some little fragments of Uzbek um, traditional melodies. And you'll hear the quartet at the beginning playing these funny little sort of pizzicato tremolandos and they're imitating the duta, which is an Uzbek lute, and the chan, which is a hammer dulcimer. Then the second movement, I was reading a wonderful book called Dancing Bears by um, a Polish journalist called Witold Chabowski. And it was about the plight of Bulgarian Romanian bears just at the time when it was being made illegal in 2007, 2008. Um, and the book followed um, these bears being rescued from their owners and taken to a bear sanctuary. And I wondered, what would a bear's heartbeat sound like? And after months and months of writing hundreds of emails and letters, finally, actually through Facebook, I got connected to the director of the um, Bristol Zoological Society. Um, and uh, I was very lucky to be able to hear a recording of I'll Be the Bear's Heartbeat while he was under a general anaesthetic. I've used um, some beautiful Bulgarian-style traditional melodies and themes and ornamentation, and I've also tried to imitate the sound of the gudulka, which is a Bulgarian traditional violin which was used to accompany dancing bears. And you're going to hear Albi's heartbeat just on one note, just going throughout the piece, all the way through on this one note, and it gets faster and happier until the end when he's rescued and taken to a bear sanctuary.
Our last piece tonight is Private Joe, which I wrote 20 years ago, and it was commissioned for the baritone Nigel Cliff. And very sadly, his father had just died, and he was sorting through his father's personal effects when he came across a biscuit tin. And in that biscuit tin were a couple of letters from Nigel's great uncle, Private Joe Wood, which he'd written from Ypres in World War I at the battlefront. Um, and they were written just a few weeks before he was killed in action. The first letter is quite chatty. He's just got there. He's quite happy. He's writing this letter to his brother and sister, Tom and Mary, and he's asking them to keep an eye on his girlfriend and send him some food packages and some bits and pieces. But the next letter, six days later, couldn't be more different. It is absolutely devastating. He can barely finish his sentences. His writing is sloping off. He's distracted. Um, he just, he sounds in a terrible, terrible state. And what I wanted to do was set these letters, but try and get a sense of what happened in those six days to change him so much. We start off with a very funny drinking song that was traditional at the time called And When I Die. And then we have um, a poem called The Letter by Wilfred Owen, where somebody is sitting in a trench writing a letter, um, but at the same time talking to his mate next to him who's bumming cigarettes off him and snacks. And, um, but they keep on getting um, interrupted by bombs. And then we have a beautiful poem, very sad, by Alec Waugh called From Albert to Bapum, which is about the devastation, the scars of war on the countryside and what it did to the area, to the buildings, the trees, the fields around it and what had happened. All the texts you can find just below in the See More bit, um, just below your screen, um, and they're all printed in the programme PDF. I'm absolutely thrilled to have the wonderful Roderick Williams here, who's going to be singing the role of Private Joe, and I'm going to ask you some questions. <laughs> so... Um, I suppose singing a new piece is always a challenge in itself, but what particularly was a challenge about this piece? Well, it's, it, actually, I'll tell you what, it's a particular challenge come, uh, singing it after Heartfelt. Oh. Because it's actually <laughs> such, a, such an emotional piece, uh, the last woman in particular. The, 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 uh, um, so the <clears throat> so first thing I must do is collect myself and <laughs> just concentrate on the job in hand. And um, um, secondly, the thing about this piece, you were saying how it's connected so much to Nigel, who's a singer that I know, and I've heard his singing of this piece as well, and it's so much connected to him as a person and his history, that it's quite difficult actually to, to uh, divorce it from him, to, to nick it from him, as it, if you like, <laughs> because it, it, it's just so much of his sort of character and his sort of Yorkshire background in it too. So uh, it's really important, though, that the piece has a life beyond Nigel and the original commission from 20 years ago. So I'm actually very pleased to be able to release it into the wild, if you like, <laughs> and, and encourage others then to take another quartet as well to take it on, and so that the piece really does have a, have a journey there. Um, but you mentioned, uh, of course, his great uncle, um, a good Yorkshireman, and the, the language of the first and last poem, of his letters, which are very intimate and personal, mm. um, sounds to me as if they should be in a Yorkshire accent, which is quite difficult to sing in. So, so particularly for me, who has my RP accent. <laughs> and some of the other songs, you mentioned the second song with the drinking song, that sounds very Cockney to me. So my accent might slide around a little bit during the course of this thing. Um, but uh, that's just trying to find all those different characters and bring them to life off the letters. And mm. um, what do you think of this wonderful quartet singing skills? Yeah, well, I'm very glad they do sing, because uh, <laughs> uh, um, I think the most important thing is that you hear them sing and play at the same time, rather than hear me try to play. That would be, that would be an accident <laughs> waiting to happen, so I'm going to leave that all to them. You're being very modest, <laughs> I'm sure. Thank Truthful. you very much, Roddy. Thank, Thank you. you.
203085. Private, Joe Wood. Second of the fifth, Leicester's C Company. Tenth platoon. British Expeditionary Force, France, 28th of the 8th, 1917. My dear sister and brother, I hope you do not think I am forgotten you, as I have not had much time to write this last few days. So, you will have to excuse me. I hope you are both going on in good health, as I am quite well at this present time. to know if she is doing as I asked I want you to please give us this Carry, carry, carry a shilling or two to make a homemade parcel and send me. I should just love. Oh, 
and my head and my feet, and then I'll know my toes will be. Oh! 
best love to all at Thank you so much, everybody, for watching, um, and thank you, everyone. It's been amazing playing again. Um, some thank yous to Pete Fozard and to Chris Kalkov for sound and vision. Um, it's it's fantastic, and hopefully, it was a, a, a great experience uh, being able to watch us from afar. Um, thank you to Rianne for the programme, and I hope that was helpful um, to learn more about the pieces, these fantastic pieces of, of Roxana's. Um, so thank you for listening and supporting. Please, uh, if you enjoy it, <laughs> it sounds very corny after um, playing music, but do, do uh, subscribe, hit like, um, <laughs> because it, it, may help, it may help us to do more things like this in the future. Um, a huge thanks to, to Roxana for writing this amazing music yeah. and for collaborating, writing as Heartfelt. We were meant to be premiering Heartfelt at our festival in Folkestone this year. So amazing that we could actually do it um, to an audience, just a very small audience here and, and a, a larger virtual audience. Um, Please, th well, thank you first of all if you have already donated to the Royal Society of Musicians, and if not, if you would consider donating, that would be fantastic. And a last thanks to Lady Camilla um, for allowing us into this wonderful space and having us. So, thank you. No, it was pleasure. <laughs> wonderful to hear you all. Thank you. And, and we are very privileged to have you here. Thank, thank you. you. So thank you and good night. Stay well and I hope we see you again soon. <laughs>